Welcome to the Control M for Workload Automation video series. In this video, we will show you why the forecast of a cyclic job only shows one run instead of all the possible cyclic runs based on the job's rerun settings. Let's go ahead and proceed with our demonstration by logging into our Control M Workload Automation GUI. As you can see in this workspace, we have a sample folder and two cyclic jobs, cyclic job one and cyclic job two. If we look at the properties of these two jobs, they're pretty much identical. You see they're both scheduled to run every day and they're both cyclic with a rerun every five minutes from job start with a maximum number of reruns set to 48. Let's look at cyclic job two. And as you can see, the scheduling is the same. If we look at the prerequisite stub for these two jobs, we can see that both of them have a, has a job X ended OK for a prerequisite condition. Now that we've examined both cyclic jobs, let's go ahead and perform the forecast on that folder. As you can see, we already have it as a sample folder. So all we need to do is click open. And forecast will show us the um, schedule for these jobs. If you look at it, cyclic job one has only one run being displayed by forecast, while cyclic job two has all the 48 runs, which is the maximum runs we have for the scheduling definition. So the question is, why is that? These two jobs are almost identical. So how come one is showing only one run and the other one is showing all 48 runs? Let's go back to our planning's domain and look at their prerequisites tab again. So if we look at cyclic job two, we see that it has a prerequisite tab, a job X ended okay. But look at the delete condition after job ends checkbox. It is blank for cyclic job two. Okay. If we look at cyclic job one on the prerequisites tab, we will see that the delete condition after job end checkbox is checked on cyclic job one. Now, why is that happening? By default, control and forecast will add the prerequisite condition at the start of the job run. And we'll continue to assume that that condition will be present at the remainder of its forecast, except if you have something in your job definition that will delete that condition. Let me go ahead and show you what happens if I uncheck this delete job after condition checkbox. Uncheck it, click on OK, and um, check this workspace in. And now that it's checked in, let's perform the forecast again. Close this and open the forecast again. And you will see that both cyclic job one and cyclic job two now shows all 48 runs for both of them. That concludes this Control M Solutions video. Thank you for watching. Please check our knowledge base and YouTube channel for more videos like this.